here, the chair of the county commissioners, we thank you, thank them, and appreciate the funding that continues to flow to us um, to put children inside a building instead of uh, in mobile units. And we still have plenty of mobile units around the county. I'm guessing we'll get around 300, or 200, I'm sorry, this year, uh, this school year. But uh, we'd love to see the new construction and have uh, mobile units, which they tend to be sometimes. Um, so we appreciate that. So I'd like to introduce our board who is here. I'm Vice Chair, Mrs. Carpenter, Carolyn Carpenter. Our past chair, Mr. Shoemaker. Mr. David Harrison, Dr. Robert Kirk, and Mr. Rob Walter. And you can see we like to sit on the front row. So. <laughs> we thank the Harrisburg Town Council. Our folks who are here, Diamond St. Williams. Thank you. Benita Conrad and Troy Selberg. And we also have the Harrisburg Town Manager. Uh, Haynes Brigman, thank you for joining us. So as we look at new schools, and some people wonder why it costs so much, you can see, one, the layout of the land, and then you think of all the services that we need to provide in the school. So you're looking at the classrooms, and with the, I'll say, smaller class sizes in the early grades, that means we need more classrooms, and we already had one uh, change to this plan to help accommodate um, building more classrooms and then you need the other spaces for physical education for arts um, for the, the bit of science and things they do in elementary schools so and then you need the common the core area so in the common areas are usually the most expensive we're putting in a kitchen in every one of these schools a full functioning institutional kitchen putting in a media center computer labs more in classrooms now integrating with classrooms to steal all of the wiring for those so it quickly adds up, and then you see just the magnitude of this site we're on and how much grading needs to occur to even get ready to build a school. So we have a few footers, some prep down here, um, but as you all know, we've delayed the school opening by a year and somewhat to take the pressure off the opening. It's very difficult to open any school uh, middle of the year. The only one that uh, we did with, without much pain was Weinkoff some years ago because they literally built the school in front of the old school and the kids walked um, and transitioned to the new classroom. So without further ado, I will introduce Bill Hughes, we're doing that. <laughs> the president of East Christburg Hughes Architects, uh, who has designed this project for us. So welcome, Bill. Thanks, Mindy. Those architects like to sit on the back row. <laughs> Um, we're very proud to be here today at the groundbreaking. As Cindy said, there's already been some ground broken and even blasted. Uh, there's been a good bit of dynamite used out here to blast some of this rock. Um, but we're very proud to be here. We brought a lot of people from our office. Uh, Mike Kreitzberg, who is the primary designer of the school. Uh, ben Schneider, who is our BIM manager, who does all these fancy 3D drawings for us. Uh, Ryan Stell had a big, big hand in the, uh, the design. Ed Estridge does our construction administration on the site. Katie Martin did the interiors and the graphics. Who am I missing? Huh? Oh, and our, our, newest, our newest member, Stephanie, who wasn't here for this project, but she's become a valuable part of our team. Um, our firm designed Harrisburg Elementary back in 1997, and it's hard for me to think that was 21 years ago. According to my research, Harrisburg had a whopping 4,000 residents in 1997, and it ballooned four times that now to over 16,000. Um, the county during that time has more than doubled in population also. And there's no doubt in my mind that this explosive growth is because of the quality of education offered here in Cabarrus County. You can ask Diane Honeycutt, who's a realtor, a number one on people's list for buying houses is education. Um, sorry about the things down so I don't get off track. Uh, with that kind of growth comes opportunities um, and issues. Uh, one of the issues is that the housing developers gobble up all the nice flat pieces of land that are easy to develop and don't have rock. And we get these sites that have challenges. But with those challenges come numerous opportunities. This, uh, when we first looked at this site, we knew it was going to take some out-of-the-box thinking as far as design. I think Mike Kreisberg and Ryan did a great job uh, with the design you see up on the boards. But one of the great things about this site is back there is Reedy Creek, and all the green you see back there is floodplain and wetlands, and is forever protected. 
So developments might happen on either side of the school, but that will always remain protected green land. And you know, more and more education is happening outside of the classroom nowadays, and that's gonna provide a very wonderful opportunity for kids and plants, and insects, and animals to interact in the natural environment. Uh, secondly, probably the most undeniable feature about the site, as Cindy mentioned, is the grade. This site slopes 80 feet from the front to the back. And when we first looked at it, trying to develop a, a school up on a plinth so we could do a one-story, even a two-story school straight up would require so much grading, it was just unfeasible. So what we developed, is, you can see from a lot of the renderings, is a split-level school. Um, the first level will be down on that grade. That's actually the kindergarten wing, first grade wing you see behind us. And then if you venture over there, don't, don't get too close, but there's a cliff that drops off about 20 feet where the kitchen and the cafeteria and some more classroom wings will be located. So we use the grade of the site. We use the building to help step down the grade, the same on, on grading, but there's still, there's still a lot of grading out here in their deck. Um, and at the center of all of this is an open commons area that you can see both levels from. You can see uh, the front entry, you can see the administration wing, you can see the cafeteria, you can see the uh, gymnasium, and you can see the media center. And this, this helps kids feel included in the school, but it also, it also makes for a safer school and that it's easier to police, it's easier to manage, it's easier for first responders to assess and evacuate in case of an emergency and it just makes kids feel more involved if they're not just walking down a hallway to the cafeteria and they don't see everything else that's going on in the school that Cindy mentioned that, that costs so much money. Um, although the school will support over 900 students, uh, the classrooms are housed in much smaller wings. Uh, we don't have more than eight classrooms on a hallway at one time. Again, this creates more of a small school feel inside of a larger school. Kids feel more engaged, they feel more part of the community. And again, it's safer because it's easier to evacuate. Uh, you can see from the renderings, especially these interior renderings, that the space is full of, of inspiring, colorful spaces. Uh, despite all the challenges on this site, our number one goal in designing this school was to design a facility where kids are engaged and energized to learn, and also that the faculty is inspired to teach and shape their future. Uh, the design of the school was truly a team effort, um, despite a pretty aggressive schedule that Tim and Brian put us under. Uh, we had literally dozens of meetings with our design team, and Tim Lauder, and Brian Cohn, and Chuck Taylor, and all the rest of your facility staff. And we listened to all their lessons learned from the recent schools that had opened and things they would do different and value engineering happened along the way. And we built that all into this school because we didn't want this just to be a model for education. We wanted to be a model for uh, ease in operations and maintenance. Uh, we're very happy that Leitner Construction, represented by Jack Leitner, uh, was awarded this, was low bidder and was awarded this contract. Uh, many of you know Leitner, they have a great reputation in this area as a general contractor, uh, especially here in Cabarrus County as they constructed uh, Mount Pleasant Middle School, which opened this year. So we hope when, when the school is done in about a year, as Cindy mentioned, uh, that you will be as proud of it as we are to have designed it. So now I'll uh, turn it over to Dr. Chris Lauder, Superintendent of Cabarrus County Schools. I think I just want to real quick reiterate some of what everyone else has said. We want to, as we're building, getting ready for 900 students, we want to thank our board for what they've done and for their vision to kind of work on that. We want to thank Tim and Brian and Lynn Reimer, who's our Deputy Superintendent. She's actually at a um, major community redistricting meeting tonight. It's going to be how we 
uh, assign students once we build some of these new things that are there. Um, again, Mike Downs, our county managers, we've sat down to try to figure out how we can afford to keep building schools. That certainly helps our school system. We appreciate that. And Steve and the county commissioners and their plan um, to, again, and their challenge to figure out how do we keep this going. And they've been great to us and certainly helpful in our school system. And we want to thank everybody from the community who's certainly a part of this as we work. And as you can see, we, we have a state-of-the-art um, facility that is going to be great for our students when we get there. And as, as he just said, Lightner Construction, we had a great experience with at Mount Pleasant. We're certainly appreciative of that. So, again, we're just very happy for the community and for everybody that's put into it and excited that, you know, soon we're going to have some students in a state-of-the-art facility. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you for all your part in it. And I think, unless I'm wrong, now we head to shovels. Is that right? All right, then head to shovels. <laughs> Brian, you want to count us down? Sure. Uh, three, two, one. <laughs>